share with you just a couple, if I could, a couple lines that have become kind of meaningful, uh, not just this Christmas, but they continue to kind of stay with me even after Christmas. Let's go to the next slide, if we could. <clears throat> we heard this song presented at each one of our uh, Christmas Eve services, O Come, this is, I think, there are seven verses to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We don't sing all seven. This is verse number six. Sometimes it makes it into the hymn book, sometimes it doesn't. O come, O come, bright and morning star, and bring us comfort from afar. Dispel the shadows of the night. And this was our 5.30 service this Christmas Eve was all about how darkness and light are talked about inside the Bible. Dispel the shadows of the night and turn our darkness, our sin, are separated from God, the things in our life that are wrong, evil, bad, sinful, turn them into light. And you have this idea that somehow the birth of Christ or the person of Christ can do that inside of a person's life. Take those things which are dark, take those things which are sinful, take those things which are uh, create distance and can close the gap and, and make them light. Perhaps uh, some of my favorite of all verses inside of Christmas carols next. Uh, this, sorry it's so small, but I wanted to get it all in, in, in one slide. Uh, how silently, O little town of Bethlehem, I think this is verse 3. Uh, how silently, O silently, the wondrous gift is given, so God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still. That's the phrase I wanted to capture in that verse. The dear Christ enters in. And then this next verse. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on us we pray. Now you'll be reminded, at the beginning of our Advent talk, Kristen introduced us to some thoughts that were found inside of this hymn specifically and these next two lines. Cast out our sin and enter in. Enter in. Here's the phrase, be born in us today. Be born in us today. Now, that's a wallop of, a, uh, of theology locked up in just a few lines of a, of a hymn. That God, who has come, can actually find his place inside of our lives. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, Oh, come to us and abide that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how it is that God in Christ can be born in our lives and abide in our lives. Oh Lord, remember, Emmanuel means God who is with us. Let's go to the next slide if we could. Inside of the Bible, there are only a few, a very few pictures word pictures, images about the idea that Christ can come to be part of our lives. We say it in 2021 that Jesus can come and live in our hearts. We make that statement. We use that terminology. Heart, not, not the four beating chamber, but heart meaning the interior, which is way more important than the exterior, the interior of our lives. And here out of the book of Revelation, you have this word that here I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, and you have that imagery that, that he can come into our lives. He can be born in us. He can abide with us. I will come in and eat which is a kind of a really an intimate phrase with him and they with me. And then the next slide out of John's gospel, and we read these words. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching, and my Father will love them and will make his home in them. And then read these words with me out of Ephesians chapter 3. It's been hanging on our wall for all of Advent. Read these words with me if you will. Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him. And so Christianity, it's the only world religion, the only world religion that makes this statement that we have a God who can come and be born in us, live in your life and in my life. And when he comes to live inside of our life, he begins this transforming work from the inside out. 
Every other world religion makes the statement that if we just do the right things outside, then God will somehow work inside. That's not true with what biblical Christianity says. The Bible says that when we invite Christ to come inside of our life, He begins to tinker, He begins to go ahead and probe, He begins to go ahead and convict, we don't like that word too much these days, convict, that we change and live our lives differently, and so our outward actions match what's going on inside of our life. He makes His home in our hearts. Now, one of the things that any preacher is going to tell you is that uh, there is always an internal tension about things that are important to them and whether or not they communicate those things to the congregation because, listen, I I get kind of wrapped up in some of these uh, uh, kind of outside-the-box ideas that you find inside of Scripture, kind of maybe sometimes I lose myself in some high-level theology questions and and sometimes you run into something that's like an aha moment and I'm thinking, yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. It's kind of hard to convey. But I will tell you this. One of the things that has shaped my life, shaped my life, was a small book that I encountered when I was in high school. It continues to shape my life. I would like to say to you today that at the end of our time together, I want to go ahead and give this booklet to you, but it's a story. It's a story that was written by a Presbyterian preacher, and it actually got published. He uh, was from Fuller Theological Institute, he was on staff, Uh, he has three names, his name is Robert Boyd Munger, and this is the book. Now, it's been republished, repackaged in a variety of different ways, as a matter of fact, this booklet has a chapter in it that I'm going to talk to you in just about, that was never in the original, but it is current, and it was updated, My Heart, Christ's Home. And the story or the message of this book is very, very simple. And it is this. If when we say yes to Jesus Christ, he moves into our hearts, what if our lives kind of resembled a house? And what if Jesus walked through all the rooms of my house? Now, before we have a chance to think about that, let me just say to you that one thing I do know and one thing that's really important about uh, being in community with one another is that while we find ourselves all together on a journey that's following Jesus Christ, sometimes change inside of our life takes place at different times. We don't all immediately, when we say yes to Christ, Everything changes and all our behavior matches what's going on. But that process happens in our life and that's what this book is about. It's very small. All of us can read this. All of us today would do well to think our way through this. And so Robert Boyd Munger says this. What if Christ, when he moves into my house, he wants to go ahead and first of all, he wants to come into the study or the library The library and the study, that's where we think about things. That's where we read things. That's where we view things. And he said, what if Jesus was to come into that area of our life and he was to go ahead and examine the things that we look at, that we read? Now, my updated version would be this. What if Jesus were to sit next to us and watch what's on our computer screen or on our phone screen? What if Jesus is going to read the books that we read? And what if Jesus is going to go ahead and and read the magazines that we read? What if he's going to walk in our lives and take a look at the mental images that are inside of our mind? And so Robert Boyd Munger said when that thought captured him, he said, Lord, I'm embarrassed by the things that I view. I'm embarrassed by the things that I read. I'm embarrassed by the things that I click on. Will you help me do something about that? And Robert Boyd Munger writes inside of his little book, he says, you know, this is one of the hardest areas of our Christian experience because the images, they just don't go away. And he said, you know, so Jesus said to me, 
if you would meditate on things that are holy and are pure, if you would read your Bible, perhaps, or just take a picture of me and hang me in the center part of your life, that might happen. And he proceeded to walk through the house from the study into the dining room, which were things that he classifies as my appetites and my desire. And he said, Jesus, sit right here. I have a meal that I want to share with you. And he said, the problem is that my appetites did not match the appetites that Jesus might have for me. I was more interested in popularity, fame, fortune, stock prices. I was more interested in things and I served him a meal of the things that I was interested in and he had no interest and he said to me is this what you're spending your time doing and there at the table he gave me a taste at what it was like to do God's will because only that satisfies and I moved him from the dining room and I took him into the living room, which had more comfortable chairs and a fireplace. And he said, I will meet you here every single day. And I began to meet him there every day. And I began to go ahead and read scripture with him. And we talked about what we read. And I began to talk to him every single day until my schedule got busy. And one day I was running on my way out to an activity and I saw him. And he was seated there by the fireplace. And I asked him, have you been here every day? And he said, I've been here every day and I've missed you. And he said, won't you come and spend time with me? And there in the living room, Jesus helped me understand that reading my Bible and prayer we're not just about my spiritual growth, but he actually wants to spend time with me. And so there, from the living room, I took him to the workroom. And he said, show me the projects that you're working on. And so I showed him some of the toys and things that I've been playing with in my workroom, things that I've been working on. And he said, are you doing anything for eternity? Are you investing yourself in any way for my kingdom? And I said, Lord, this is all that I've been working on. And he said, listen, if you'll let me, I'll take your hands, I'll take your heart, because I'm not interested necessarily in your ability, but I am interested in your availability. From the workroom, I took him into the rec room. And he said to me, uh, listen, I'd, I'd like to talk to you about what you do recreationally. And I said, Lord, I can't right now. I'm going out tonight. And he said, can I come with you? And I was embarrassed. And I said, I don't think you can come tonight. Maybe we can get together tomorrow night. And he said, no, you know, I'd really like to come tonight. And I didn't want him to be part of the things that I was involved in. And so he said, I can clean these areas of your life up if you'd like me to. And I invited him to talk to me about my friends. About what I did with my recreational time. About where I spent my time. About what I drank. About what I did. Now, I mentioned to you that this book was written in 1954. The reason I didn't hand this out to everybody is because of this next section that was added. And it was added appropriately. And it's an area that we don't like to talk about too much inside the church because it makes people just a little bit embarrassed and we want to go ahead and be mindful of the age level. But then I invited him into my bedroom. And he said, you know, I'm not so sure that these areas of relationship are the things that you should be involved in. And I said, Lord, are you really serious that you want to go ahead and 
talk to me about my areas of intimacy and sex. And he said, you know, I not only love you just for how you behave, but I love every area inside of your life and I can help you in this area. Now, junior hires, high school students, I want to tell you that by the time I got hold of this book, I wished I had had this book. Moms and dads, let me just say to you, this is an interesting way to, to talk to your students about that area. And he said, you know, my ways are not the world's ways. And then I took him inside of the house and said, Lord, it's, it's yours. I want you to make your home in my life. I came home one day and he said to me, there's something that smells inside of our house. <clears throat> and I said, Lord, where is it? He says, it's upstairs. It's in the closet. Now, this made me just a little bit unhappy, Robert Boyd Munger says, because I'd already given him the living room, the study, the rec room. I've already given him the bedroom. I'd given him, and so he said, uh, it smells in there. And Munger says, it's only a two foot by three foot area, and the problem is, there are areas that I've locked away for years and never thought about. And Jesus said, you know, I can do something about that. And I said, I'd like for you to do something about that, but I don't have the courage and I don't have the ability to open up the room by myself. But you can have the keys. And so over a few moments of time, Jesus opened up the hall closet that stunk of all the brokenness, of all the pain, of all the areas that I've never let him touch before in my life. And when he opened up the hall closet, he gently, ever so gently, cleaned out the hall closet of my life. And then he said to me, you know, <clears throat> you've invited me in as a guest and you've given to me all of the rooms inside of the house of your heart but I really don't believe that you've given me everything. And he slid the deed of my home across the table. And he said, will you trust me with all of it from this time forward? And he handed me a pen. And I signed the deed of my life and said, Lord, anything from this point forward is a blank page. You fill it in. I'm signing the bottom. This Christmas, I want to go ahead and give you this booklet. And uh, moms and dads, Understand, page 12 is not for your youngest kids. But if you have boys and girls, grandchildren that are ages, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, it might be a wonderful thing to go ahead and work through. But here's what I want to say to you. This Christmas, if he's the one who's coming to make his home inside of our heart, which area inside of your life which room inside of your life 
do you want to invite him to spend a few moments in? Now, I have a, an absolute, uh, this is completely a surprise to these folks, they don't know this. I was going to let you pick these books up yourself. I don't want to do that now. As a matter of fact, I want all of you, you four kids, if you'll come with me, okay? Somebody's going to have to carry that, okay? Somebody's going to have to, and I need a bunch of kids from over here, this side over here, if you would. <clears throat> you come in, this is really, really heavy. But I think maybe we'll do it this way. Nice. Here you go. Hold on, so let me give you another stack. There we go. Thank you. Now, as they're coming, and go ahead, you can just start passing them out. <clears throat> And listen, there are extras if you want to take some, if you think somebody would love to read through this. <clears throat> Again, just because this was meaningful and has been for me over the years, maybe you might not find that, but I would encourage you, a sentence at a time, there's something that's profound and deeply meaningful about the idea that God wants to come into our lives. And friends, listen. Listen. Some of us today have confused this whole Christianity thing and we've thought that if we just say yes to Jesus, that that's the end game. That is not the end game. The end game is come into my heart, come into my home and walk through every room so that I can sign the deed at the bottom. Even the stinky hall closet. So this Christmas, I can't think of a better gift that we can give to you and that we can give to him than our hearts. That he would come and as the little town of Bethlehem says, will you come and be born in us and will you abide in us? Oh Lord, the one who's God with us, Emmanuel. So Selena, why don't you come on and Jeremiah, come and you sing a closing song. You are welcome to remain seated. You could even open these up. You don't even have to sing. You can open these up and kind of flip through. And I just want to say to you, as you hear the lyric of this song, if there's something that you want to, Lord, will you come into my rec room? Will you come into my bedroom? Will you come into my hall closet? Lord, I want all of my heart to be yours this morning. <clears throat>